I don't know if you know, but recently my vault was full and you know, it's kind of obvious why such thing would happen, especially when I keep 50 of the same weapon. As you see here, I have over a page of igneous hammers by itself. And the reason for that is, you know, the screenshot. And on top of that, I'm going to see how many it takes until I get the 5 out of 5, the perfect roll. And we don't know if we're going to get another this season, so, you know, that's that's that. But, I know, I know, Nico like butts, but that's not the part that I want to talk about. This was all streamed live, so it's a little bit different from normal. That's probably why I do live reactions i read chat and honestly this will be more of a fulfilling engaging you know video compared to my others anyway i hope you enjoyed this decade long video and i will hopefully be explaining some weapons you were kind of curious about maybe maybe not well only one way to figure out my vault hasn't really changed that much but i have a few things i want to explain a little bit more why do i just have a random anti-open my vault why do i have a breakneck in my vault why do I have multiple crafted weapons in my vault or duplicates in general in my vault? So I'll go through that step by step. And most of the weapons that you see that are exotic are mostly there just because I used them one time and didn't delete them after. Of course, I have something like Last Word. I would never get rid of this. But like I can easily get rid of my Chappie, my Cerberus, my Huckleberry, my Mida, and my Vigi. I've recently started using Sturm again, and it's honestly probably the one of the best, if not the best, 120 in the game. And then you have Thorn, I'm still waiting for the Catalyst to start using that again. But I have something like Blasphemer. This thing is not really worth having, not worth going for at all. It's a mid-shotgun, but the fact that I have threat opening on it makes it really good. And, of course, I don't actually use this whatsoever because I have something like Heritage which comes with hipfire grip and offense strike, which is really, really strong if you like to play with hipfire. I crafted this one for PvE, I just haven't changed it into PvE perks yet. And then I have my PvE succession, just haven't made it into a PvE role yet. But this is the sniper I've been using a good amount. Snap moving target feels really good on succession. I went with... What? Since when did it have tactical? It's not supposed to have tactical mag. It's supposed to have steady rounds, but it has tactical mag fluted barrel. I would say go with the steady rounds and fluted barrel for, you know, a really good sniper. It's an aggressive frame, so it hits hard. But you also have something like Eye of Soul. Sadly, you can't get the sniper anymore at the time at this time. But you know, later in the future, you probably will be, and most likely will probably come back with snap opening. Snipers just have gun power crept the fuck out of. And you see this weapon, he's like, what the fuck is that? I've never seen that scout rifle. The Scholar is a very old trials weapon, and I only keep this as a relic. I keep this as a relic, so it, it has pretty bad perks, to be honest. Fucking full auto. <laughs> Bottle opener scout. And I have a lot of weapons that have just gotten power crept. Chroma Rush, it's not really worth it anymore because we've gotten Rufus's Fury. But I haven't crafted myself one. Isoluna, I think it got power crept by Ostringer, but Isoluna is still good mainly because it's stasis. Multimac, I feel like just in general 900 SMGs are out of the loop because you have 750s that just have the target lock on every single fucking one. Immortal is a great example of an SMG that just power creeps all the other SMGs. Luckily, we find they're starting to get more precision frame SMGs with target lock. And if we ever see the return of Shayar's Wrath, then, you know, that's the only SMG you will see in PvP. That's also why I've started using this thing. Rap... How the fuck do you pronounce this? Rap Peshus? Shush. For fuck's sake, bro. Hold on, I can use the cheating, the cheating software. Rapacious. Rapacious? Ah, okay, that makes a lot more sense. And then you have Rapacious Appetite. It's a very, very good SMG. And you might see, oh, you have 800 kills on it. Yeah, but that was only because it was bugged. This thing is actually just really bad. It feels really bad in general. I don't, I can't tell you why. Like, looking, comparing these two SMGs, it shouldn't really feel that much worse. But for some reason, this thing just doesn't feel good. It's either something about just Immortal having a different cone 
different fucking recoil in general than Rapacious, but I, I can't tell you why. You have Whistler's Whim. I don't actually use bows whatsoever, and you're going to notice that in my vault. I only have this because it's zero power level, so that's something to put out of the way. The bounce is pretty funky. The reticle dances around too much. Yeah, that's probably what it is. And yeah, you probably notice one thing right off the bat is the fact that I have two sword breakers. And the reason I have two sword breakers actually is because this one is better. The one I made a video about is the slide opening one. But after, you know, I made that video, someone reached out to me and told me threat detector is better. You get 100 handling and 100 range with... Thread opening instead of slide opening, which doesn't give you max handling. So that's already better by that. And yeah, I would definitely pick up Swordbreaker. It's a really good SMG. Hung Jury, I would replace with the World Drop Scout Rifle. I don't remember quite the name of it, but it comes with Keep Away Box Breathing. And the only reason I would say go with that over Hung Jury is because it has Keep Away. Keep Away is broken, by the way, on every single long range weapon in the game. It changes the accuracy cone to become better just by being far away. I think that's pretty pretty good. And I think, you know, it doesn't quite necessarily need a nerf, but it definitely makes, makes it best in slot. You know how everyone had range finder on the weapon? Yeah, keep away kind of did that now. I have two DMTs mainly because I have 4,464 kills on this one. And I honestly don't want to get rid of it, but... I would definitely get your hands on a crafted version. It's just better overall. You can pick perks you want yourself. And on top of that, if you don't have one with Snapshot, then the new DMT is definitely better. That's the only perk I'm pretty sure they replaced, which is Snapshot. It's pretty sad that they have to remove perks, especially from something like Exotics. And also, a lot of weapons I have in my vault, I'm probably just planning ahead of time to make videos on. Like... You might see a return of Warden's Law on my channel. You never know if I might make a Smite of Marine video. The thing is, Pulse Rifles in general are probably not in the best slot at the moment, mainly because they mega buffed auto rifles. And something like Quicksilver Storm is really good right now. I think that's the best 720 in the game. And you might say Rufus's Fury or whatever, but I think this, the fact that this thing has so good stats makes it so good. On top of that, I had micro missiles or whatever the perk is called. Though I will say, the new world drop pulse rifle is actually really good. And the weapon perk roll I was looking forward on this is Golden Tricorn. I'm looking towards it because Golden Tricorn might be really good with something like Lance Cap Exotic, the one that makes the ice picks, uh, which, which will freeze your enemies, which correlates if you slide across them, they you will proc golden tricorn times two which is really dumb it's a 50 percent damage buff inside of pvp and i think golden tricorn is a silly perk but it's definitely not broken whatsoever and then you have a weapon like imperial decree i think right now aggressive frame shotguns are really power corrupt at the moment i put opening shot slide shot accurized and barrel shroud and most people would go with threat detector over slide shot but I chose slide shot because I'm a very slidey boy, especially if I rock in Taya's wards. <laughs> in Taya's wards. But the problem with the Imperial Decree, I think I mentioned this in another video, is the fact that Astral Horizon was added the same season. And you see, the problem about that is Imperial Decree has overall better stats, it has overall better perks, mainly because it has slide opening. The only reason I would say you would want an Astral is for Threat Detector and Elemental Capacitor. Or Slide Shot Elemental Capacitor. Something along that line. The only reason you would even think about getting an Astral is for Elemental Capacitor. That's the thing about Imperial Decree, it doesn't have that. And it kind of just power crept Astral the same time they came around. And I think the fact that all aggressive frames have so bad range at the moment... Make something like a precision frame, like, guess what, Matador, really, really strong right now. And I will probably make a shotgun video based on only shotguns later down the line. And saying what the problem with them is at the moment, I might wake, make one about snipers. And there is generally just a lot of problems with the special weapons in the game at the moment, I think. But, of course, in my vault, I have a lot of weapons that's just collecting dust. For example, I have... The Enigma, I used this once only to farm for Pinnacle, 
drops from duality when it dropped because it had it well, there was a bug where you could just keep farming it on master and it would always drop pinnacle that's the only time i've used this never not once not since and then you have other weapons like father sins i thought this was going to be the next best sniper in the game i tried it i got 11 kills and realized you know what this sniper is not for me or something like likely suspect i used to be a fusion rifle fiend back in the day I was on every fusion in the game and likely suspect was hitting hard and then they fucking nerfed it. Then you have something like under your skin. It's the weapon that got me the closest to becoming a bow main. I thought it was really good. I still think it's really good. Bows are definitely unchecked at the moment. And once people started realizing it, we're definitely headed towards a bow meta. I know I said the same thing about scout rifles, but scout rifles just have no drawbacks in like, just think about it. 150 scouts, what's so good about them? They kill faster than hand cannons, they have infinite fucking range, and I think the problem is just people don't want to use a scout rifle. I bow, I'm playing against bow players, they're like so annoying. Yeah, bows are really broken at the moment. If it isn't for under your skin, then it's probably Hush that's gotten me closer to a bow main. I always love to use Hush in momentum control, pairing it up with Huckleberry or something like that. But like, I have a few weapons I want to play around with, like Ancient Gospel, Rapid It Swashbuckler, or Solar Hand Cannon, so I can proc Radiant, I can extend Radiant by just getting kills, and I can two-tap people over and over. I used to have an obsession with Sara's Verse, and I don't know why this thing is in my vault. But yeah, I can go back to shotguns again. I was gonna make a this. <laughs> A deicide video, but I just ended up never doing so, saying, oh my god, rapid fire shotguns are back, but I decided never to do so. You have Compass Rose, I was going to make a video on this thing as well, mainly because it has the perk Adagio. Once you get a kill with this thing, it's like a fucking slug. You, you remember the slugs that was in the game that shot multiple pellets? Yeah, that's what Compass Rose becomes like whenever you get a kill with it. Adagio is really good. It's just, it won't help you on your first kill. And also on top of that, air assault is literally useless in shotguns. And I have other pieces of weapons like occluded finality. I've always wanted a snap opening shot one, but I just never got my hands on one. Which still to this day haunts me. And then you have frozen orbit. I love this sniper to death. I want one with a bigger mag, mainly because I can get two one-shot body shot bullets. They will both hit for 201 which, think about that, that's not fair whatsoever. My sniper can body you for 201, which means the only thing that's going to save you is something like a rift or an overshield. The only way you can get the, the one-shot body shot is with um, Sanguine Alchemy. So the one thing about Sanguine Alchemy is the fact that it, while standing in a rift, you gain bonus damage to weapons that matches your subclass. So if I'm on void, I will get increased void damage to my void weapons or basically. So it allows you to one-shot body shot inside of rifts. And then you know, probably saw already, I have something like an Astral Horizon. This is the role you would want to go with on the new one, I'm pretty sure. Threat Detector Elemental Capacitor. I don't think there's a reason to get anything else in it, like I said earlier. I have a steady hand, but sadly, it's actually really mad. It's really mad. I have Swashbuckler, which, of course, it allows you to one-shot after, you know, a throwing knife kill, and going crazy with knockout kill and that's what i use this for i usually if you see me on it i'm gonna be running around as an arc titan on knockout it's not fun to play against or even better stasis lock but yeah the point is that's the only time i'm really gonna use something like a swashbuckler 120 or a swashbuckler sniper in general which there only is one of and then you have something like macabre which is the only sniper that actually drops with swashbuckler and it's actually really nice because you can one-shot body shot with Swashbuckler. And you want to know the even more annoying thing? Guess what? Oh, I can't wait for Macabre to come back so I can get Swashbuckler on it. <laughs> yeah, good luck with the Adrenaline Junkie. That's what we're getting now. And then you have something like a Territive Loop, which... I'm missing one red border for it. Yeah, I'm not going to go to Niamuna to farm for it. Fuck that, I think I'm good. This shotgun, only because I'm praying for the day the trench bill, you know, gets buffed. So, you know, this thing is basically, basically gonna be the new shotgun to, f to basically go for. But, you know, that's never gonna happen. We all know that. Anyway, you have positive outlook. 
this weapon is basically unusable without Zen Moment. And if you don't know what I mean, if you have seen any of the clips with it, it literally bounces so unbelievably much, you kind of need Zen Moment. And then you have the Comp Sniper. I have one with Elemental Capacitor, one with Moving Target, and one with Opening Shot. And I've seen a lot of people talk about it, mainly because it has 5 AE. It's the same factor how Macabre has 5 AE. I'm pretty sure that it's the only two snipers in the game with that number. And that number is very, very, you know, important. If you want to run Stasis Primaries in case, and if you're in my case, you want to make Diamond Lances, because you get Diamond Lances after kill with Stasis Weapons. What I would recommend running is probably something like Peace Bond. I won with Swashbuckler Rangefinder. Of course, Rangefinder got nerfed, but overall, this thing has really good stability and it's going to feel really great overall. And then you have Liminal Vigil, which is also another great sidearm. Sadly, again, they nerfed Rangefinder, but it has time to trigger. You can get Ricochet and, of course, Chambered or whatever barrel you prefer. And of overall, this sidearm feels really, really good. And I'm going to go back to this SMG. That's why I made it to begin with. It can make Stasis Picks, aka Diamond Lances, which allows you to, again, freeze people, which is what I'm after. And that's the whole goal. That's why I would recommend picking up the new World Drop Pulse Rifle. And Isoluna is another good pick. And you have the Seasonal SMG from Shax, which is another great weapon probably one of the best ones in the game and you probably noticed elephant in the room why do i have so many you know warden's laws i have one with zen moment moving target one with fourth time frenzy perpetual frenzy snapshot zen moment kill clip snapshot perpetual motion vorpal and enlightened action kill clip i have the enlightened action kill clip one because it basically has max range and guess what max range gives you fuck ton of range and the reason I kept this one is because it has snapshot sights. I want to play around with it because the handling on this weapon isn't great whatsoever. And I want to be able to use this weapon. I really do. I just wish I could use it. I kept the fourth time frenzies because this is probably the best PvE role I have right now. If not perpetual motion frenzy. But this one is for DPS. That's why I have a Vorpal one. Sadly, I never got my hands on fourth time to charm on this one. Which is really bothering me. I didn't realize how much damage Warden's Law actually did in PvE until now. Sand Moment Moving Target is the one I kept for PvE currently. Because it feels great. It's probably the best one yet. If not Snapshot Zen Moment. Either of these would work. I just kept... I've been using this one the most because it has the most stability. Actually, let me talk about a little bit of Scout Rifles. Because I have an opinion I want to talk about. Especially Transfiguration. This is the peak of what a scout rifle is capable of doing. The two-tapping beast, the two-tapping menace, whatever you want to call it. You get a kill, and next kill is two-tap. Bomb, 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 bomb. And you can benefit a lot from playing floaty warlock. And to be honest, I think scout rifles need a nerf really bad, personally. I do think every scout rifle in the game should feel like Mita multi-tool. It doesn't have the fastest TTK, but it's really consistent at really far ranges. And the fact that we have Hung Jury, the 3 tapping 180, the fact that we have Transfiguration, the 2 tapping 150, just feels really dumb when we don't even have a consistent 140 that can 2 tap. Don't you think? There's a lot of setup that needs to be done on Ancient Gospel. You need first a melee kill, and then you can get a 2 tap. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's all you need. You only need a 2. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Uh, that's a lot of setup. Shut up. But yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say about Scar Rifles. I don't really have anything else I want to talk about. But another thing you probably noticed, I have three fucking crafted Aikilos SMGs. And I have these because uh, I'm dumb. And this one is literally just wasted. I don't even know why I have it. I could delete it right now, but I don't want to. You want to know why? You see those two yellow perks? You see that I have enhanced dynamic sway and rangefinder. It's the only reason I haven't gotten rid of it. It has the yellow border. Let's talk about a little bit of snipers. I have Galu. I have Beloved. I have Mercurial. I have Eye of Soul. You know, there's a bunch of these adaptive frame snipers that's in the game. And when you think about it, the reality of it, most of them are just the same. Locus, 
the finds of Yasmin. And you know, I got all of these snipers because I want, went on a journey thinking, what is the best sniper in the game? What will, what will you think is the best sniper in the game? And personally, after using and playing around with all of these snipers, I've come to the conclusion that aggressive frames are usually the better option. And the reason they are the better option is because it's basically a free kill. You body them, 9 out of 10 times, you might get a kill, and it will just leave them so weak they cannot engage for so long. And another cool thing about them is they can one-shot every super in the game without a damage perk. So you don't need to get your hands on a Vorpal Sniper if you want to be able to one-shot all supers in the game. You don't need to get your hands on anything like that. Just off the rip, it will one-shot everything. And that's why I don't, I don't think rapid fire snipers are that good at all because it will, it won't even one shot, you know, people inside of a bubble, which I think is really dumb. Which is also why I'm going to talk about it soon in a new video, the perfect sniper ever made. And I'm going to keep that a secret because, you know, it's actually really, really stupid. And then we have something like combined action. I got these and never used them. That's just the reality of it. I still want to make a video on it, but I just haven't done so. Of course, if you have noticed, the snipers I talk the most highly about is usually high impact snipers. Like, for example, Frozen Orbit. And another part about them is usually they are around the 50 zoom. I find them to be the most consistent for my playstyle. I find them to be the most, you know, reliable for how my sensitivity is. And that's also why I prefer 50 zoom snipers. Over 40 zooms, 35 zooms, 45 zooms, 58 zooms, whatever it might be. And another thing you might notice by my vault, there's not specifically a large amount of auto rifles here. There's mostly, you know, I'm not a big auto rifle guy at all whatsoever. I can say that with pride. Even after the auto rifle changes, I still don't really think that I need to use one of them. Of course, sometimes I get fucking ran by one, but 9 out of 10 times, I feel like I can play and win against auto rifles very easily without much, you know, problem. I feel like the gameplay of the, an auto rifle is way too simple and really boring in my opinion, and it leads me not to use them. I don't want to just stand there bow walk with an auto rifle. It doesn't really feel a lot of engaging content or engaging gameplay, whatever you want to call it, which is why I choose to not do it. Of course, you have something like Breakneck, and I am absolutely in love with this weapon, mainly because of the perk Onslaught. This weapon's fire rate increase as you stack Rampage. It might sadly be Sunset, but if we don't get Onslaught on the weapon when it returns, you know, I'm gonna be very, very sad. Another thing you need to keep in mind, next season all the Garden of Salvation weapons will be returned in, you know, with new perks and craftable, which means you might see a lot of Zealots reward next season. Or maybe Amis and I, or Ancient Gospel. All of the weapons are really good, even the shotgun, because I think it might be the new Matador, and I hope it really is. Because usually, what that ends up happening is that Matador is finally out of the fucking thing. I don't need to farm for the, sh for the fucking ogre every time I want to... I don't want to farm the ogre. I, I can't. I can't. My sanity can't take it anymore. Literally, all they need to do is put threat opening on it and we're good. As I said earlier, I think a lot of the SMGs I now have in my vault is kind of outclassed. Like, Kallus' mini tool, the title, you have Aikilos, Immortal even, I might say. I think every SMG in the game right now, in my opinion, feels worse than what Unending Tempest and Shayura's Wrath do. I think that's the two best SMGs in the game at the moment. And I wouldn't see a reason to use anything else. Something like Seven Seraph. If I could get myself the, the god roll of this, this would actually be probably my da daily driver. But the sad reality of it, the only way you can get your hands on one is for waiting for Sir to sell it. And on top of that, I want to use the weapon with the ornament. I can't even lie. But like, just in general, most of the weapons that you see here are either for a video purpose or they're just rotting in my vault, slowly decaying over time. And, you know, I don't have a lot of DPS weapons. I don't really care that much at all whatsoever. And the rest of my vault is just filled with endless amount of armor. And, yeah, all these armor pieces that's masterworked worked are used for a build in some or other way. Most of them are usually left in the dirt because I've, you know, 
farmed. I know I'm a hunter. I farmed a load of new artifice armor. That so all my other gear, you know, got just scrapped in the past. Like these arms. Wait, why do I even have them? What the fuck? Like you can see what I use or not. I can actually just get rid of these. And the same goes for my Titan. I have a bunch of unused gear. Because there might be an exotic I haven't used in a while. And with me not using them, I haven't been using those armor pieces. Because they're specifically set up so I get a specific stat. And yeah, that's why my vault is filled with 90% armor. And a page of igneous hammers. Okay, now to the part 2 of the video. What weapons am I seeking for? Because remember, Destiny 2 is a game where you can basically farm for unlimited amount of weapons. There are endless supplies of weapons in this game, and, and just in general. And first of them is going to be the Charles GL. This is probably the weapon I'm looking forward the most to. Mainly so I can replace my memory intradict for good and retire the weapon. I think it's been through endless amount of torment, endless amount of battles. It's like that one veteran who always have to come back. And this is the exact role I'm looking for. Nothing else, nothing more. It has chain reaction, impulse amplifier, volatile launch, high explosive ordnance with a blast radius masterwork and a blast radius adept mod. And this would be a really, really, really good GL. Probably, not probably, it will be the best GL for PvP in general. And people already think that heavy GLs are really broken in PvP. Katana, farmable next season, Banshee? What do you mean, Katana? Kantata, Kantata. Whatever the fuck it's called. Did they say anything special in the TWAB? This week at Bungie. Um, uh, what weapons will be available? Let's read this. Gunsmith focusing enters chat. They're back. It's back. Suros, Kantata, Syncopation, Fug Fuju, S S S S I don't even know what that is. Picasso, that thing, Palmyra, Percy's, Ragnhild, Enyo. <laughs> Is there any specific weapons that I'm actually looking for? Galu. Ooh. I already see some. Enyo, D, Galu, Lodbrok. Um, Gunsmith Focus will be replacing Bungie 6 weapon selections. The following weapons will be moved to the Whirlpool. Fuck you, Bungie. These weapons will not be available from Gunsmith Engrams or Focusing but will instead occasion to be available from Xur. Contingency plan, like legal action, the number, memory interdict. So chat, get your hands on memory interdict. The D aside. Really? I thought that was one... <sighs> the vision. Fuck, man. How will it work? Day one, Omelon, Suros, Suros, Hockey, Hockey, Weist, Weist, Omelon. That's the rotation of it, okay. How much will it cost? Three gunsmith engrams? Three engrams to focus for one fucking weapon. I don't think Bungie themselves realizes how fucking dumb that is. How can I get gunsmith engrams? We are aware that ranking up gunsmith reputation alone is not the ideal way to earn gunsmith engrams. We have taken this into account and have decided to include more ways to obtain engrams. Thank god. Oh, Bungie, never mind. You actually saved it. Ranking up Gunsmith, Reputation, Law Sector Completions, 20%. Legend, 40. They're telling me to do Law Sectors to get these fucking engrams? Excuse me? I thought they were smart. Actually, never mind. No, no, actually, this is good. Law Sectors. They're rewarding us. If I want to sit there and farm for a perfect role, Gemini Jesters, I can... Guess what? I can also get engrams for something called the gunsmith. And with those engrams, I can, you know, focus for a fucking red back 5 SI. Now I'm just waiting for us to be able to farm world drops from trolls. Wouldn't that be cool, right? Common Bungie L. No! Bungie's giving us a reason to farm for stuff and giving us a way to farm for stuff. No! I don't want to do that. No! Hand it to me right now. Intelligent devs. Okay, so there is a few weapons I'm actually interested in getting my hands after, and one of them is Division. And particularly this role with, you know, whatever might be, but it's mainly the fact that I can get Kill Clip Killing Wind on it, which makes the gun really good. 
and the time to kill is impressively 0.5. And you know what? It's an arc weapon. Let's say I want to rock Bacris. So there's a 0.4, and that's just for dodging, or actually getting a kill and dodging, but it's 0.5 from just dodging with Bacris, and then get a kill, 0.4. That's really good. That's really good, if you can believe that or not. And the weapon I've been going through torment to getting, and still having gotten the roll, by the way. But I have been looking for this exact roll this whole season. Unending Tempest. I've been looking for this this whole season, and still having gotten perk for perk to drop. I've probably opened over 200 engrams just focused on this weapon alone. And I haven't gotten it. And then you have the new Muna one. I want this with keep away target lock. I've always looked towards getting one of these, but it's like every time I've checked, I it's always the wrong day because the way you farm for this, if you didn't know, you have to go on the game, first of all, and it has to be a specific, what is it called? A specific terminal overload, and it has to be the one in Lim Limming Harbor. And then you have the seasonal pulse rifle. and. You know, I already have this roll, which means I don't really need to farm for it, but I just want to go over it one more time. Golden Tricorn on Stasis, if I, you know, proc times two, it will actually be really dumb. A 0.53 as a Pulse Rifle, which, you know, everyone knows have, you know, very good range. It's basically like a two tap from a 120. 37, 39 meters, I'd, I'd find that really good. Then you have Trust. But you know what, playing Gambit is already a miserable experience by itself, but I want one with Golden Tricorn. The only problem is it has 13 fucking perks in each column. I'm good on that one. Pure Poetry, same problem as Trust, which makes it really annoying. Like, when you think about it, this Hankin does have some good perks. Actually, a lot of really good perks. Just half of them are in the fucking wrong column. The Seasonal Fusion Rifle. The World Drop Fusion Rifle this time around is actually really, really strong. And when I say really strong, I mean really strong. For some reason, this thing doesn't have any effect when you shoot it. I don't think I have any clips of it, but every time someone used it around me, I would never know it was a Fusion Rifle. It would just shoot and I would die. I find it a little bit ridiculous, and till this day, I haven't gotten it to drop once. Long Shadow. I think we all know why I'm actually even interested in the sniper. It's a 50 zoom sniper. It's an aggressive frame. And you know it can roll slide snapshot. You think it's slide shot? That's a shotgun perk, right? But guess what? It's not. It's fucking not. If you put this this beast inside of PvP, nothing can stop you. This thing will be a magnetizing thing to the head. And then you have Shepherd's Watch. This thing can roll with under pressure opening shot. And it will actually make the cone a little bit too dumb. Sadly, though, obtaining this... Yeah, good luck. Dude, there's a eternity. Go go have fun, please. Do it, come on. I'm waiting. Yeah. There's a eternity waiting on you. But yeah, anyway, that's some of the weapons I'm interested in. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed this little vault tour. It's time? Oh my god, can't you... Oh, fuck's sake. Give me two seconds, bro. Give me two seconds. I'm doing important business right now.